Gabon's long-standing president, Ali Bongo, was recently deposed by members of the Republican Guard. His plea for support appeared feeble against a backdrop of opulence. To make noise for the people here have arrested me and my family. My son is somewhere, my wife is in is another place, and I'm at the residence. But what's truly striking is how citizens have reacted. Kibwani's people are celebrating the apparent end of a dynasty that began in 1967. And Gabon is not alone. In recent years, we have witnessed a surge in attempted coups across West and Central Africa. But what's remarkable is that citizens are cheering these disruptions. This optimism towards military takeovers reflects a deep-seated frustration with civilian leaders across Africa. According to Afrobarometer, only 44% of Africans believe elections enable voters to remove unwanted leaders. Preference for democracy has also declined from 73% to 68% over the last decade. Bongos in Gabon are just one example of African presidents who organize elections but cling to power. Leaders in Uganda, Rwanda, Equatorial Guinea, and Cameroon have ruled for at least two decades. A decline in the quality of life has made many questions democracy's advantages. Rising inflation, armed conflicts in the Sahel and Great Lakes regions and poverty have taken a toll. The World Bank projects a further economic downturn in sub-Saharan Africa. There is a common thread among these schools. They all occur in former French colonies. France's historical ties and influence have raised questions about its role. Coup makers often use anti-French rhetoric to gain support, citing Paris' interest and backing of authoritarian governments. As Africa faces this complex landscape of political change, one thing is clear, the relationship between democracy, leadership and external influence is evolving. The people's voice remains powerful and the continent's future is being reshaped in ways we are only beginning to understand.